Well, it's almost been a full year since Epic Games got their greedy hands on Metro Exodus and made it an Epic Store exclusive. I had it pre-ordered at the time, so it actually didn't affect me. I still have it on Steam, but it's coming to Steam in just a few days. It might already be out on Steam by the time you see this video. If you're interested in that, I made a video of it when it came out a year ago. You can click that video up there and check that out. I'll, I'll wait here. You can go watch it. I promise I'll be here. But this video is for the expansion Sam's Story, which is the final expansion for Metro Exodus, unless they pull a surprise and give us another one. Hey everybody, Derek here. I have been somewhat excited for this expansion. I really liked Metro Exodus, and I also really liked the open world segments. I know Metro Exodus is a bit divisive, some people really didn't like the open world segments, some people really did. I loved being able to explore at my own pace, so I personally liked it, especially the Volga parts. There's two expansions for Metro Exodus. The first one, which already came out a few months ago, is a lot more linear of a design. It's more of the traditional Metro experience. Sam's story is more open world, and I was pretty excited for it. Now I dial my hype down a little bit, because, you know, things can happen, it might not be that great, but I still was looking more forward to this one than the previous one. In a twist, I actually really enjoyed the previous one more than this one. Let's start simple. The graphics. I actually don't have much to say here. To no one's surprise, this expansion looks incredibly good. Metro Exodus was one of the best looking games of all time, in my opinion, and this is no exception. The footage you're seeing doesn't do this game justice at all. I'm running on a 980 Ti and playing at 1440, so I had to tone the graphics settings down to around medium to get a solid frame rate at 60. But still, even on medium settings, this game looks pretty good. On ultra settings, it looks ridiculous. I don't want to dwell on the graphics too much because plenty of other channels have fully broken apart why Metro looks so good and how advanced it is compared to other games. But I did want to point the graphics out because in an open world game, a lot of it is immersing yourself in a realistic environment, and graphics really do add to that. And yeah, I know, graphics don't make the game. We've heard this many, many times before, and you're right, graphics don't make the game. But a great game becomes even better with great graphics. I mean, how much would we have talked about Crisis if it wasn't so groundbreaking technologically? It was a good game, yeah, but without the graphics, it definitely wouldn't have made the headlines it did. Point being, Metro Exodus looks fantastic, and so does its expansions. There are many times throughout the game that I just wanted to look out over the fog rolling over the water with the crumbling bridge and the broken down buildings. It's a very photogenic game. But let's move on to the parts that you guys actually care about. Let's talk about the story. As you could have guessed by the title, this focuses on Sam. Sam is the only American in Metro Exodus, and he is voiced by no one other than Steve Bloom. Because everyone is voiced by Steve Bloom. That's not to say I have anything against Steve Bloom, but man, he gets around. Sam's story is very simple. Sam was a US Marine that got trapped in Moscow when the bombs fell. He just wants to go home. He wants to go back to San Diego. Instead of traveling west through Europe, he went east to the Pacific. His goal is to find a boat to try to get back home. This lands Sam in a Russian city on the Pacific Ocean, and wouldn't you know it, there's a fully functional submarine there, which isn't as crazy as it may sound. Submarines would be one of the few safe places to be during the middle of a nuclear war. As it turns out, there's another American on the submarine by the name of Tom, who is from Seattle. I'd just like to point out that at one point, Tom says California is an amazing state. No one from Seattle is ever going to say this. The Pacific Northwest doesn't like California in general. Just throwing that out there. Anyway, he wants to use the nukes on the submarine as a way to force order on the world. In his mind, he's doing good. He has no intentions of actually shooting them, he just wants to threaten people with them. This just sounds like world domination through the threat of nukes, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. The previous captain of the submarine intentionally didn't use the nukes on board because he doesn't like the idea of nukes, and he doesn't agree with Tom, so he went AWOL. Klim is Tom's right-hand man. He's the brute force kind of guy the military strength. He takes care of the bandits and in first interaction will tell you that some of them are still hanging out front. The bandits are actually scared away and leave the town alone for the record. That said, this forced the bandits to take control of mutants and use them in a sort of slave trade, so bandits are still around. You might be wondering why Tom hasn't done what he wanted to do with the submarine. And the reason for that is because the submarine doesn't have all the materials it needs to be fully functional. And the only person that knows where these materials are is the previous captain, who refuses to talk to Tom and doesn't trust Klim. Well, being the only two Americans they know of in the entirety of Russia, Tom and Sam hit it off pretty well. Tom quickly trusts Sam and tasks Sam to go find the previous captain to try to get the materials needed to make the submarine active. All of this is told to you at the beginning of the game, and you don't really get full control of your character until about two hours in. Okay, getting into spoilers here, skip forward to this time if you don't want spoilers, but still want to hear about the game. Sam goes out of his way to find the captain, convinces the captain to cooperate, gives the materials needed to make the submarine active again, 
In a twist that absolutely no one saw coming, Klim tries to take over because he wants to use the nukes. The previous captain also tells you that bombs were rigged inside the submarine in case someone ever tried to take it over, and hands you the switch because he knows you won't be searched when you get onto the submarine. The captain doesn't want the submarine being used. He really doesn't want to see another nuclear war. He wants you to blow it up because he knows he can't. You eventually stop Klim and as the submarine is pulling away, it gives you the choice between blowing up the submarine and not blowing up the submarine. Now keep in mind the entirety of the plot is Sam wanting to go home. So blowing up the submarine seems really stupid to do, so that was the choice I didn't take. And you're not even really rewarded very well. Instead you just get to see Sam going by the Golden Gate Bridge, which are nowhere near San Diego, may I point out. Sam frequently talks about wanting to see his father again, just to see if his family's still alive and how he doesn't have much time. But you never see this. This is all you get. It's really underwhelming. But the other ending is even worse. You blow up the submarine and that's just it. Submarine got blown up, and now you're stranded. If you can't tell, I'm not exactly impressed with the story, and it goes a bit further than that. The entire tone of Metro is kind of thrown out the window a little bit. This game really upplays the whole badass American Marine thing with Steve Bloom shouting one-liners every so often. I mean, within the first 20 minutes of the game, I found myself in a 1v5 first-person cutscene fight where you have no control over what's going on. It is a cutscene in first person, with Steve Bloom calling him assholes and kicking ass and doing perfectly fine until he eventually catches a lead pipe to the head and then he's perfectly fine a moment after. Yeah, this doesn't fit the tone of Metro at all. In fact, this feels like their attempt at making a Hollywood fight scene, and I don't know why it's here. And that range true for the entirety of the game. You're a badass Marine. This really doesn't fit with the atmosphere Metro has going for it. Metro was supposed to be a lonely, hopeless experience. The game was never a power trip, and never felt like you really had control of what was going on around you. And sure, the game might have focused on Arteon, but really the focus was the entirety of the Metro. The parts I remember from Metro are walking around in the subway tunnels seeing all the people struggling to survive. Metro's main focus never has been the protagonist. Metro's main focus was the entire world, the situation you were in. The protagonist was simply the driving force to see more. It was about the unknown. You always felt so helpless and lonely. But in Sam's story, you just feel like a badass marine. I didn't really know who this story was for, but I think I figured it out. This seems to be the stereotype of what Russian Sea American Marines has. The stereotype is for Russians playing the game, not for Americans playing the game just as a Russian stereotype in an American movie would be for Americans, not Russians. Either way, it broke my experience out of the game a lot. I never really felt fully immersed in what was going on around me. And they really wanted you to know that Steve Bloom is a voice actor because he talks pretty frequently, even throughout combat, even throughout gameplay. You pick something up and he'll say something. You shoot someone and he'll say something. I don't think they needed to have Steve Bloom talk every five seconds. Anyway, now that I've complained about the story for most of this video, let's talk about the part that arguably matters the most in a video game. The gameplay? Sam's story is supposed to be more like the open world segments in the base game. I really like these segments so I was looking forward to this, but unfortunately I feel like this is basically the worst variation of that. It's most like Volga. You'll have water and you have mutants attacking you throughout that water and bandits here and there, but there's no big fish to attack you. Or anomalies. Still, there's places to explore nonetheless, some question marks on the map to find some hidden stashes, so on and so forth. So if you played the base game, you should already feel familiar in this environment. The problem is I felt like it wasn't polished anywhere near as well as the base game. There are invisible walls all over the place, and quite a few times I got softlocked. The silliest softlock I ended up finding is when I tried to take a ladder and then I couldn't get off of the ladder. Pressing the movement keys didn't do anything, I was just stuck on the ladder. But I have a better case of getting softlocked due to the open world design not being polished enough. For example, taking this boat and driving through here, the gate closes behind you, but you need gas mask filters, and if you don't have any filters here, you're just kind of screwed. You have to load to behind the gate. It looks like you'd be able to go other ways, but you can't. There's invisible walls in every other direction. You're locked to this one path, and you're eventually going to get the objective going this way. So it's not really open world, there's a lot of things that funnel you down specific courses. This is really frustrating because in an open world game you assume you can go anywhere whenever you want to, and this simply isn't the case. Maybe there was a stash you saw on the map and you think to yourself, I'll go look at that in a moment, I want to go this way first, but the moment you go that way the game locks you out of going back. This happened to me and I didn't even explore the whole right half of the map. The moment you go through a junkyard section, you get into a boss battle and you can't return. As a result, I never ended up finding some of the upgrades for the new 1911, which would have been awesome because apparently you get a drum mag and make it fully automatic. I want that. Too bad, you're gonna have to play the game again if you want it. I don't know who thought this was a good idea or why they even bothered doing this. 
by far that's my biggest frustration with the game. Just missing stuff and not knowing what I missed because I didn't know I couldn't go back because why would I ever assume that? Other than that, they really didn't add much more to the game that you hadn't already seen. There were two new guns, the 1911 being one that I talked about, which is interesting seeing just a regular, nice 1911 instead of some cobbled together weapon. The other new weapon is something that seems to be based off a of Glil Ace, it's AK derived of some sort, and you eventually get attachments to make it look more like a Thompson, which is impressive that they made an AK design look like a Thompson. That's actually pretty awesome. So yeah, I do have some positive to say about this game. It's not all negative. I'm making it sound a lot worse than it actually is. The parts that click are actually really fun. Like the open world segments that you're able to do are enjoyable. It's just there are so many other things that annoy me. Another new thing that annoys me is that there are mines everywhere now. Nice. You remember that feeling you had when you were walking down hallways in the original Metro? The feeling of there could be a booby trap anywhere so you walked incredibly slowly checking every corner? Now take this feeling and move it outside because there are mines everywhere in this game that will kill you instantly. They do beep before blowing up and you can't run away in time before they explode, but chances are that probably won't happen. The game does give you something to know mines are around, via a watch that beeps constantly at fucking anything so you just hear constant beeping that won't stop. There's not even any reason for these mines to exist, the bandits didn't place them there. They're just there from before. It might make sense from a lore perspective to have mines everywhere from a previous war, but for gameplay purposes, this is really fucking annoying. It just needlessly slows the game down when you're trying to explore. You already have enough to worry about when you're running out of filters, need to find ammo, and there's mutants all over the place. The last thing you should have to deal with are also mines. If you can't tell, I'm a little disappointed with this expansion. I was looking forward to it, but it just does so many things that bog the entire experience down. It'll take you around five to five and a half hours to beat this expansion, but you won't even really get full control of your character till about two hours in. Despite the fact there's a lot of open world stuff, there's also a lot of just kind of sitting around listening to people talk. I know this is how Metro usually is, but they didn't do it in a way that's interesting at all. A lot of that does have to do with the fact that the writing is just a big step down from the previous games, and you don't even really see the village you're in. This is supposed to be a town, there's supposed to be survivors, but I never get a chance to walk around to see where they're living or what their living situation is like. There's not much environmental storytelling, Sam is not really a deep character, Steve Bloom is sort of typecasted, and to make things worse it does the Metro thing of not really telling you what you need to do some of the times. For example, within the first 10 minutes of the game you fight a boss and I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't want to waste all my ammo, but that seemed to be the correct thing. And then I ended up dying. I thought this was what I was supposed to do. I thought a cutscene was going to play after I died, but no, I just loaded to before. I did the same exact thing and then a cutscene played, so I don't know what I did wrong. Like I said before, this expansion could have used a lot more polish. It just doesn't feel like it was ready to be released yet and they could have done way more with this. I don't think this expansion is necessarily bad, but I don't think it's worth going out of your way to play. It just kind of is something there to play if you have time, I guess. I don't know, I'm starting to rant here. I was a little disappointed with this, to say the least. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thanks to all of you guys that came over on Twitch when I was streaming this game. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash Dragon. If you subscribe, you get to see my videos a little bit early. The same thing goes for my patrons over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Jarek4. Thank all of you guys for clicking this video. The next video will be a lot happier than this one. It's already done. I just can't post it yet, so hyping that up a little bit. I'm really happy with that video, so you'll see it soon. Hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you then.